Hey, what's going on, folks? Just me by myself. A little bit of schedule issues, uh, just to kind of give you guys some housekeepings. There will not be a watch along, and one of the reasons why there is a pre recorded pre match. All of our schedules are a little bit convoluted for the past couple of days. Just certain situations have come up, so we're a little bit, a little bit tied up. But we will be doing a call in show following the Toro match. So, guys, let's not worry about that. But on other news, let's kick off this a uh, little bit of a pre match pressure. Nice and short, short and sweet. Just to get to the points to you guys, Juve Torino, Juve looking to build off of the win they got against Fiorentina, and we're trying to get six points for the first time in almost like two months, right? So kind of going in quite briefly, so I'll start things off very, very briefly here with Allegri's pre-match presser. So a couple of the questions that were being asked out of Allegri here, and we'll have it here just for you guys you can see for yourselves, uh, Allegri's thoughts on this is it's an important match, but at the same time, he kind of gives a little bit of a hint on what his future is going to be. So we'll kind of look at it from here. So Allegri urges Juventus to secure important Champions League positions. Uh, Juve boss Massimiliano Allegri wants his players to ride the adrenaline wave to Champions League qualification. The Bianconeri enter the Turin Derby uh, against Reno uh, on Saturday, set in third place, but not knowing the performance of Serie A sides in Europe. A uh, five could potentially qualify next year for the Champions League uh, due to certain uh, results in the Europa League with uh, Al Atalanta really thumping Liverpool there. Uh, but with the Italian title out of reach, uh, they focused on securing some continental action, uh, well, so more so the Coppa Italia and uh, top four in the league. So Allegri's response to the current actions is it's nice to get this point in the season where the adrenaline is high. It will be an important match for us in the Champions League uh, because it is fundamental for us, both on an image and an economic level. We cannot be absent from the top competitions for two years. So now 35 of the 40 days begin where the points are extremely important in which we must fight to be victorious. Italian teams are doing well in Europe, not only this season. We must be confident to work and improve. I know we can improve to work uh, to always do so. We want to be in the Champions League. It's a factor that makes the difference in this club. 1-0 win over Fiorentina on Sunday came at a crucial time after a poor run in Serie A. It was their second win in 10 games and a sequential one that came off of the Coppa Italia. Uh, he responds by saying, winning helps and it's more important to win against Fiorentina. It's a hard clash to get us out of this difficult moment. We must uh, have the continuity, but Torino will not be an easy appointment, opponent because they do have their own objectives. And uh, this is kind of some stuff where he talks a little bit about his future, per se. So uh, I don't have it. It's a different transcript that I have from Canadian Dave. But in regards to Yurich, he talks about Yurich being a great coach. Thanks him for the kind words that Yurich gave Allegri. But again, the goal is to make the Champions League. Uh, and then he talks about when you win, everything's seen in a different light. Against Fiorentina, it was a direct clash. It was important because in a period that we were experiencing, and though it might have not been pretty, we still managed to get the win. Criticism is always being taken into the account because it often comes from people who understand football. I listen to them, and I take my cues, and you can always improve. Having said that, Sunday was my first shot of improvement. Uh, talking about the future, uh, tomorrow it is Torino and then it'll be Cagliari. And then we've worked over the previous month to get to this point where within the objectives, we must achieve them. Gives me enormous, pl uh, pleasure and fills me with joys to have won as many derbies as Trapattoni. And, uh, you know, getting on track of our goals is a beautiful thing. And my doubts and right now, I think as far as lineup goes, my only two doubts for tomorrow are Kostic and Illing and between Cambiaso and Wea. So, Moving over to the FOP mob here, where we can kind of review and, and, and talk about some stuff here. So we'll go here, looking at the projected lineups. So FOP mob is saying we've got Chesney, Gatti, Bremer, and Danilo in the back. No surprise there. Uh, it's going with Cambiasso, McKenney, Locatelli, Rebio, and Kostic in the middle. Dusan and Keza at the top. I think that's a given at this point that Dusan and Keza are starting. It's It's spotty, I think. That's going to be interesting to see, right? Because Dusan's growth and then Kies is kind of hot and cold. We'll, we'll kind of see how that all plays in together. I think Kambiasa McKenney on the right. Obviously, that makes sense. Um, for me, I think the biggest eyes that we're going to need to have in this game is Locatelli. Locatelli is going to be the most crucial player of this match because you are playing against a very defensively solid team in Torino. And you need a very good playmaker 
to see through the lines, to go through the defensive uh, hurdles that Torino will throw at you because Juric is the kind of coach that makes you work for the wins. They're, they're not really easy wins that you can get off them. So it's going to be, I think this game, again, is going to be very dependent on whether or not Locatelli is capable of being him or not. And he's got to, he's got to, he's got to step up. So looking at what we have here for Torino, we've got the SMS, essentially, uh, SMS's sibling in net. You've got Rodriguez, Bongiorno, and Tameze in the back with Lazaro, Linetti, Ricci, and Bellanova is a midfield four. And they're running Vlasic in the hole, uh, flanking Zapata and Sambria. So kind of similar 3-5-2s to an extent. They're just playing with a more attacking midfielder versus us. That's going to be a it's going to be a challenging game, just more so because of how Torino like to really sit back and really grind out results. Because if I were to look at it outside of, and I can see if I can sort the table here so I can show you guys, but unfortunately it doesn't allow me to sort by uh, goals against. So we'll show it this way, and you guys will just have to follow along. So when you look at the table of defenses, Torino is the only team outside of Bologna, us, and Inter that have conceded. So I think they're fifth in the league for best defenses. So they've only conceded 29. The, one of the issues with an Ivan Juric squad, the biggest issue with Ivan Juric's sides is not that they concede a lot. They just can't score a lot because of how defensive they are. So if you look at their record, 11 wins, 11 draws, and 9 losses. And they have a 31-29. That offense is atrocious. I, I mean, you know, ours is bad at points, but it's it's nowhere near them. Because, like, for example, when we look at the top 10, they are the only ones closest to 30 because you have Fiorentina at 42, Napoli at 48, Lazio at 41, Atalanta 55, Roma 56, Bologna 45, us at 45. I know it's like, gosh, it's like if we switch Malta for Allegri, it's like the same exact offensive output. <laughs> Pragmatism, folks. Uh, then you have AC Milan at 60, Inter at 75. Yeah, Torino is one of those teams you can't look under or you can't look over per se because they are very defensively sound, but offensively Torino isn't really the best when it comes to most of their offensive creativity. So if we look at some of their fixtures, uh, this is actually one of the rare bouts per se with Empoli where they've scored two, but Monza one, two against Udinese. And then if we continue to go one against Napoli, nil against Fiorentina, a couple of another two, two nil, uh, against or two goals against Roma, lost 2 0 to Lazio, 1 2 0 against Lecce. So Torino, very more so average it, besides maybe this is probably their only anomaly against Napoli, where they've scored a good chunk and Atalanta for some reason. So you can't take an Ivan Juric side quite lightly because they get by the lower level teams 1-0 and then they go to beat the better teams 3-0. It's Ivan Juric's squads. They are a pain in the ass to per you know, they're very difficult to prepare for. We struggled when Ivan Juric was at Hellas Verona. That was one of the hardest matches and one of the most unlooking forward to matches if that's even a way to phrase it per se. So this is going to be a snooze fest. I hate saying this to folks. Tactically, if you're a tactical weirdo, it'll be fun. But outside of that, it is definitely going to be a snooze fest. Uh, if you're thinking that it's going to be high-flying octane offenses, no. The idea is is more so which coach is going to out-pragment the other coach. Uh, just a couple of insights, by the way, before we sign off here. Trino are ranked 15th in goal scored, so they're... Lower half, one goal per match is their average. They've only scored six. They've scored six in their last five. Villanova has created the most big chances for Trino with eight. Uh, with Juve, we're ranked sixth in goals scored per match, so we're in the top top five, top six essentially. Juve haven't lost to Trino. They've won fifteen times, drawn four times. So, kind of giving you my thoughts. I think. I think there's going to be a win. I think it's going to be a, a scrappy win. I think Allegri can figure a way out, and I think the players will have enough creativity to get through this one. So 
Uh, put your thoughts in the chat. Also, if you haven't put it in the Discord, you'll be able to put your thoughts there and your your ideas there. And uh, remember, there isn't going to be a watch along due to scheduling conflicts. So I will see you guys for the call-in show. Like and subscribe.